What's up, everybody? I'm the Hook. And I'm the Blade. And together we're, you know, welcome to the What Blade If Cast, <laughs> a show about all things <laughs> Assassin's Creed. I'm your host, Lawson, joined as always by your host, Tim. The standard Ottoman book blade has two parts. <sighs> Timothy. Hey. I'm not going to spend so long this time, but I have another mobile game related victory to to share. Interesting. Have you ever played Jetpack Joyride? No, I don't I don't know what that is. I'm of the opinion that Jetpack Joyride is the best mobile game ever created. Yes, better even than Tap Tap Revenge, and it is really fun. Um but a couple years ago, I had this glitch happen while I was playing and while my high score at the time was like around 10,000 meters on the run, I had a glitch that made me unkillable for a while, and I made it to 30, 37,000 meters, and I'd set a high score. And I was excited because it was a really ridiculous high score, but also immediately disappointed by the idea that I now had a high score I could never beat, that I achieved not by my own skill, but but through underhanded means. And so every time I played the game for the last couple of years, it kind of bummed me out that I had this fraudulent high score. Right. Um, But this past week, I was able to pass it on my own. Really? Without the underhanded, you know, unkillable thing? With no glitches whatsoever, I made it to 39,000 meters. That's... And I feel pretty good about that. That's pretty cool and handsome. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. I knew you would appreciate that. You're you're the only person I've told. I'm really proud of you. I I don't think anyone could have beaten your score uh, except you. Thank you, Tim. We got a couple notes at the top of the show for you today, guys. Um, Some of you may or may not have noticed this. We didn't really put it on all of our usual outlets where we promote the podcast, but we just launched something of a spinoff show on our channel called The Hookblade After Hours. Um, And our first episode is about season two of The Boys, a TV show we both like. And if you would like to know what we think about The Boys... Uh, you should give it a listen. We have decided we like talking about things that aren't Assassin's Creed sometimes. So every once in a while, you may see an After Hours episode in your uh, subscription box. Because I'm assuming as you're listening to this that you're subscribed. Because why wouldn't you be subscribed, right? Yeah, I just wanted to tell you as a friend. Or if, just wanted to let you know. Or if you don't uh, watch The Boys, and but you also don't care about spoilers and you just want to hear us talk about The Boys, also go listen to it. For that reason, I'll let you in on a little secret. We were drinking some alcohol at the time. Yeah, but honestly, we we were still pretty much the same. So I'm not sure that's a big selling point. But the other thing that I suppose is worth mentioning right now, and and I just want to like say this so that it's clear, depending on where things are when this episode releases, we are recording this at 2.30 p.m. Central Time on a Wednesday. And we have no idea at the moment who will be the next president of the United States. So we can't really say anything about that because we don't know. But probably I'm guessing we'll have a pretty good idea by the time this actually is uploaded. So I'll just edit in a computer voice saying something about the election (laughs) if it changes before I schedule it. We still don't know shit. God bless America. Uh, And that's what we'll have to settle for. I hope that whomever you are and whomever you support and whatever you believe, that regardless of how the election has turned out, if it has turned out at all, I still don't know if it will (laughs) by the time you're listening to this, hopefully we can give you some brief respite of entertainment and comfort for roughly an hour or so while we talk about Assassin's Creed as we do here every week. And it's very fitting that we are talking today about essentially alternate universes, uh, different possibilities about things that, you know, Assassin's Creed has had the opportunity to do in the past, has maybe chosen not to do, um, things that we know are, are canceled projects or changed projects, and essentially just imagining how Assassin's Creed could possibly look very different today 
were it not for certain choices that the developers made along the way. And I think that could be a pretty fun thing to talk about. What about you, Tim? Yeah, I mean, there's there's plenty of directions they could have went. There's plenty of things that we know about that they were at least considering that they didn't go with. Um, and there's also just plenty of, of things that you and I like to speculate about, like, what if this happened? So, oh yeah, definitely been looking forward to getting into this topic. And we're going to be covering things from all the way from like code names for games that changed before release. We've got outright canceled projects. I've assembled a good majority of these things into a fairly linear list and we could go through it from the beginning, but I wanted to ask you, Tim, and I'll answer this question too. What do you think out of all the things, you know, have changed or, or have been decided against in the history of the Assassin's Creed franchise. What do you think is like the point where if another choice had been made, the franchise would look the most different? Hmm. Um, like what's the, see. what's the butterfly effect? Uh, what's a the flex? butterfly? Fuck. What's the butterfly <laughs> effect change that <laughs> would have made the biggest difference? Hmm. Well, that I know about, okay. Can it be kind of like conjecture? Can I, can I have some leads? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm thinking, uh, for me, uh, you and I talk about a lot of the times where if like Unity came out and it was super duper successful and everyone loved it, yeah. at, at the very least, if it launched well, um, that would have meant very different things for the series. I also think that because of Unity's reception and whatnot, they, I think they made some tweaks and some changes to Syndicate. And I think if Syndicate would have been more reflective of maybe the Jack the Ripper DLC, like it seemed like it was going to be from those screenshots, that we would have mm -hmm. seen a, a much different game. And I think that game, for a lot of reasons, was kind of just like the crowd control fire extinguisher on Unity so that they could take a break and come back with Origins. Yeah. Yeah, that was literally going to be my answer if you didn't say it. Um, I think that if Unity had gotten like another six months in the oven or or even a full year delay and it just had launched with a clearer vision and fewer bugs, we could have seen a very different Assassin's Creed landscape. First of all, you'd have to consider that like that would make Rogue essentially a main release uh, of that year. And that could have had all different kinds of consequences being as similar as it was to Black Flag. People might have actually gotten frustrated with that if, if Rogue had come out as the main release. But beyond that, if Unity launches well and it's positively received, yeah, it's very possible that like Syndicate comes out with a darker tone and we maybe even get a third iterative Rogue or Revelation style game after that. That's probably like one of the biggest what if scenarios that I've always thought about. I feel like they would have delayed Rogue had Unity been delayed. I couldn't have seen them the one title that year. I think Rogue doesn't piss people off if it's parallel to Unity. Yeah. Because I think Rogue works as like the kind of stepping stone between previous gen and the next gen and at that time. There are so many different things that could have happened. So let's kind of, let's kind of, I'm going to just go through, I have a list of things. Yeah, go for it. And we can kind of play out like how different do things look if this is what happened. And you have to start at the very beginning, right? With Assassin's Creed. And what's the alternate possibility that everyone knows about with that game? It's that it almost wasn't Assassin's Creed. It's that it was originally developed under the idea of being a direct spinoff from P Prince of Persia. Yeah. Or not even really spinoff, but kind of a main title it was going to yeah. be called prince of persia assassins yeah it was literally just going to be called prince of persia assassins have you seen the demo for that yeah. for that or like the the concept demo like i don't know if it was a playable demo but it was like a totally it it's it's really awesome to see that kind of stuff and and when you look at the early assassin's creed concept art and even just like not only prince the prince of persia yeah. iteration of, of the game but even the very early concepts for the first Assassin's Creed in general when it when it was going to become a franchise like things about the kingdom being able to be like you you being able to hunt animals in the kingdom and like regenerate yeah. health and stuff so yeah it is really interesting if Prince of Persia Assassins had come out we would probably I, I, I can't help but think we'd still probably be getting Prince of Persia games too right I don't know I think that it's a question of like how powerful was the Prince of Persia brand that, you know, if you took the game Assassin's Creed and you just labeled it a Prince of Persia game, which is not really what was ever going to happen. Right. By the time it started to look like Assassin's Creed, they started to call it Assassin's Creed. You know, they figured sure. out 
I think a big a big part of it was the whole idea of the reliving genetic memory. I feel like I've heard Patrice Desilet, uh, the the creator and producer on that game, I've heard him say that he had that idea and liked it so much. How that opened up the world and into all of these different time periods. How that allowed for all of those game design explanations for things like the you know synchronization. Once he had that idea, he was like, I really want to do that. <laughs> Right. And it really wouldn't make sense. Yeah. For Prince well, of Persia. That, well, that's the thing, right? Is Prince of Persia Assassins would have theoretically only been taken, would only have taken place within the historical context of it. And there probably wouldn't have even been that much of an emphasis on like, hey, look at the time period. It would probably be a lot more like fantastical yeah. and stuff. There probably wouldn't be historical mm-hmm. figures and whatnot. So you don't get to say, oh, Prince of Persia Assassins, uh, here's the sequel in Renaissance Italy. Right. <laughs> but know? also, you don't have the like, hey, here's nine historical figures that died that place in that year. Like, you don't get to do yeah. that with Prince of Persia, I don't think. Um, I, I, I've never played Prince of Persia, so I don't want to be talking out of school, but Prince of Persia seems a lot more fantastical than than historical realism yeah. and whatnot um, that Assassin's Creed sports. You have, like, sand that can manipulate time and stuff. Yeah, I I, I, I know so little about what Sands of Time does. Like, I all I know is that when you <laughs> die, it reverts back. Like time, whatever, you know what I mean? (laughs) But I just always thought that the prince just goes pocket sand and he throws the sands of time into the enemy's (laughs) eyes. And he's like, you just have been hit by the sands of time. And they're like, oh, my eyes, they have the sands of time in them. The sands of eyes. (laughs) And it's just really interesting to me that like the reliving genetic memory stuff birthed the whole modern day science fiction concept. It allowed you to jump through time periods like that. So just that one concept alone. And that's where I agree with Patrice. And I would say that you do too, is like the animus reliving genetic memories and all of that, like that is Assassin's Creed or else it's just an historical like theme park game, what have you. Like that is just Ghost of Sushi. That is Assassin's Creed. And so it totally tracks that that's what Patrice came up with and that's what differentiated it and that's what made it made it its own franchise. The next, yeah, I think we can agree that like that would be a pretty drastic change. I don't think there'd be any games like what we've gotten after that game that would have happened yeah. in the world where Prince of Persia Not even a little. Came out. No. The next like big point of diversion, Brotherhood, you know, it seems like by most accounts Brotherhood started life as just part of Assassin's Creed 2. It was not going to be its own game. And then they had cut content from AC2. They had enough cut content in terms of the story and the gameplay. They said, let's just whip out a whole nother full price title with all this stuff. And that's why Brotherhood feels very similar to AC2. Um, and I mean, there are even videos of Corey May talking about Assassin's Creed 2, talking about how it ends in 1507 or whatever. I don't remember the exact date, so I might be wrong about that. I want to say he said 1503, but I don't think I yeah. don't think AC2 even cracks 1500, right? No, I don't think so. No. So it was definitely though consistent with where Brotherhood ended. Yes. Yeah, so. or, or, or yeah, or started. But yeah, but you can go look and see that like they as as soon as when they were doing marketing material for AC2, they 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 like the ending where it ends in AC2 was is totally not where they intended it to end originally. You know. If you imagine a world where they were able to get those things done, AC2 maybe becomes a much more interesting game. It could be too bloated, maybe, but really, really big game with lots and lots of stuff uncharacteristically for the time. For sure. And then you may or may not get Revelations at all. I feel like Revelations getting to be a main title had to be a decision that only got made if Brotherhood sold well. 100%. Considering the time that they had to make it. so Also... As far as I'm aware, that was a point of contention for Patrice because he didn't want to do Ezio again. You know, he yeah he he didn't want to do more Ezio. He didn't want to do Brotherhood. He worked on Brotherhood for like a blip, and then they replaced him with someone else. Um, I don't know to what degree Brotherhood was actually finished. I don't know to what degree Patrice actually influenced things on that game. I'm sure there are some people that could tell us. But all but I, what I do know is he started on Brotherhood in the whole drama started at some point throughout Brotherhood. So that was the point. So like, if you think also, we could also think about what if Patrice got what he wanted, we would have theoretically gotten minus two Ezio games. Yeah. And like Patrice originally envisioned basically a trilogy 
I think the only source we have on this is like Nolan North and who knows what he was really privy to. But I know he talked about the idea that essentially in Patrice's mind, you were going to get a Desmond game an Ezio game or sorry, uh, an Altair game an Ezio game and then a Desmond game. And it was just going to be that. Well, I think I think what no, I, if I recall correctly, Nolan North was saying how you have Altair, Desmond or oh, sorry. Hold on. <laughs> now I'm doing it. Altair. <laughs> We've both done Altair, it. Altair, Ezio. And then like, I think. A th- there was a third assassin, probably what he wanted to be Connor originally. The only thing I can tell you confidently is that Nolan North specified a Desmond game. Yes. That I remember. For clearly. sure. Because yeah. he said, and then there was going to be a game that was all about Desmond in the modern day. And then the whole crowd was like, oh my God, can you believe he just said that? That's what I wanted to see. That's what I want is a Desmond well, game. Well, oh my God. Well, that's the thing is, is he was specifying, he, he, like, he was being very specific about how the original intention wasn't what was so that Desmond could hone all of these skills to these assassins and become the ultimate assassin in the modern day to kill all the Templars. I'm gonna I'm gonna literally look at the clip so no one has to correct us on what exactly the fuck Nolan North was saying. Okay, all right, all right, I've got it. It's it's way more than we were thinking. So to to, to be clear on the whole Nolan North thing, he said the original plan as he heard it was there'd be about six games, and each game Desmond would get more and more powerful. By the end, he'd be the ultimate assassin. He's he's poorly communicating the time travel thing because technically the Animus is time traveling. Yeah, there's a lot of weird fucky shit going on though in the modern day. Where like, there's been some stuff in the <laughs> Origins modern day that's kind of trying to imply that they're all that that even the modern day is in a simulation. In Origins, you said. Yeah, yeah. In Origins. How did they? How, how, how do they put that in between all like the? No, because it's not in the modern and... day. It's stuff that you found in the past. They're essentially these. Like six temples in the game, and when you go into them, uh, you hear a message from a first Civ narrator voiceover thing, and they're like incomprehensible, fucking hensible, dude. Like I had no <laughs> idea what they were saying. But when I tried to read them recently, um, in preparation for like you know playing Valhalla, I was looking back at some of that stuff, and there's definitely an implication in one of them that like that modern day, like that the world itself is a simulation. I wonder if that anyway. Like all I'm trying to say here is that. Assassin's Creed gets weird and like time travel. I'm not sure it's as out of character for what they would have been doing as we might think. Yeah, I I get what you're saying. I just I guess I'm being more charitable that he's just poorly communicating it. Yeah, I mean, I I think that maybe less than being able to time travel, it might be more the case that a final game would incorporate multiple settings and let you play th- in many of them at the same time or what have you, but yeah, I just I, I if Patrice had his way, I couldn't see him doing that. <laughs> we, we don't we know. Never, we don't know. It's it's um, a what if. <laughs> it's a what if. It's a what if they did that. We we it's common knowledge that Revelations began life as a 3DS spin-off title called Lost Legacy. We don't really need to talk about that too much. But what if it was on 3DS? I'm just glad that it, it isn't. It wasn't, you know. <laughs> Me too. It, it's also it's also Absolutely. so interesting to me because the bigger what if for that, that I, I, I'm i not sure if we've, I'm sure we've mentioned it, but I think the bigger what if of that is less about the game and more about, it makes sense for Darby to be writing on like a handheld spinoff game because of his past handheld spinoff games with AC. But if Revelations didn't happen as a full game, would Darby have written Black Flag? Would he have written... Dude, I, don't e- I didn't even think about that. Would he have written Valhalla now? You know, so... Who knows? We don't know necessarily if Darby... I mean, it's intuitive to imagine after writing Chronicles and Bloodlines and what have you that they said, all right, here's a new Assassin's Creed handheld game. Let's get our go-to guy for that, Darby. And then someone at Ubisoft goes, oh, we're going to upgrade that to a full-on title. Hey, Darby, you've done some writing for it already. You want to just do a full game? And then he's like, hell yeah. And then they do it. (laughs) And then... Then they're like, wow, Darby, you're really good at writing these full games. Let's get you to do a pirate one with Ashraf Ismail. Like, that's very intuitive, but it is kind of an assumption on our part. It's very possible that he they'd already decided, oh, well, you're going to write the next Assassin's Creed game. And that they ended up, you know, like, it's possible. I think that's probably the most likely explanation. Yeah. Though. I think that's true. I think if, if it was a 3DS game, maybe he still gets promoted because he'd done some good work. But... It's a, a less clear path to writing a game like Black Flag. I feel like the timeline matches too. That like they're impressed with what he did on Revelations yeah. and are like, "Hey, how about you fucking write this 
you know, this like iterative pirate game that we're doing. And it's interesting because like there's so much we don't know about Ubisoft's inner workings and what the relationships are between the different studios. Because as we know, Revelations and Black Flag are different studios. Right. The Revelation studio went on to do Unity. Also consider this, Lawson. Fucking Re- the Revelation squad both got kind of promotions out of that, though, because they, they were like, hey, Amancio, how about you come work on Unity? You know, after he after he yeah. finished up Revelation. So do I think, yes, that Revelations it make is a kind of a clear path to Unity, but for them to take a chance on their next big next gen experience with the guy who did Revelations, that that in and of itself is kind of a big thing to me. Totally, totally. Um, moving on to, to AC3. I wasn't able to find, there's not really a whole lot of clear, like alternate possibilities for AC three other than like, what if the development on that game wasn't a total clusterfuck (laughs) and ruined everything, but we know it has some cooler kind of darker concept art. We also have that whole target video. I forgot about that. There is a target gameplay video that shows a prototype version of Connor. Which is incredible. It's an incredible video. Like the, the gameplay that they were targeting, it looked really, really cool. And Definitely has a darker atmosphere than the final game and definitely just is more technically impressive. And I wonder if part of the problems they had making that game was that they set their sights too high because you can watch that target gameplay video right now and it's still impressive. It still looks great. Yeah, for sure. Whereas, you know, presumably if you watched that target video that we got those leaked screenshots from when Syndicate was called Assassin's Creed Victory, it still looks like Syndicate. I mean aesthetically and gameplay wise the systems are different but it doesn't look radically different probably whereas the target video in ac3 looks like miles miles better than probably most assassin's creed games that exist not only does it provide like a different whole like gameplay vibe but i understand they're not trying to communicate much story and whatnot to that but like it it really presents the potential main character in that game in a, in a different light because he's quiet reserved and he massacres people and it really does seem like he is kind of like a force to be reckoned with in this area of the world i don't think he speaks once no you get spoken to but i don't think connor or whoever they were calling him at the time speaks at all but it is kind of interesting that the presence in that video to me isn't what like at all the presence of connor in ac3 yeah it's a great little target gameplay video and it's like yeah, every time I watch it, it makes me want to play Assassin's Creed 3, and then I remember that Assassin's Creed 3 isn't like that and is actually very bad. Yeah, it's it definitely speaks to how like a lot of these games come out with demos and, and, and marketing material that, even in Black Flag's case, don't look like the game, you know? Yeah. And, and completely realized and finished and working titles, they release marketing material that doesn't stack up. And the target video thing's different because it's not marketing, it's purely internal. Uh, reference as you know right i wish we could see that kind of stuff for all of the games except i know the reason we probably don't which is that they would probably make all of the games look like trash because these target gameplay videos are are really interesting other than that uh moving on to ac4 one of my favorite things to talk about with assassin's creed is the code names of the games because i feel like they're a window into what the developers actually want to represent and what they actually want the game to be called. In some cases, those code names are better than the titles. Sometimes, in some cases, they're not. AC4 was originally supposed to be titled Assassin's Creed Golden Age. Interesting. And I think that's an instance where you can both see how, like, they're saying, oh, it's the golden age of piracy and we're really capturing that feel, but also that the marketing department is going, yeah, but that doesn't tell anyone that it's pirates. So we yeah. have to make it something more piratey, and thus Black Flag. Which do you prefer? Do you prefer Golden Age or Black Flag? I prefer Black Flag just because I like the ring of it, but I do hate that it is called Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag and not just Assassin's Creed Black Flag. That's how most people that's how most people just refer to it anyway. Well, a lot of people call it AC4, you know. Well, right, yeah. People either shorthand it to AC4 or they just say Black Flag. Um, I've never heard anyone combine them. It did uh, does remind me right now how m- me and some friends, it might have been you, we pointed out that like this is the year we're finally getting ACV because there have now been two times we've speculated we were getting ACV because we thought it was going to be Assassin's Creed 5 when Unity was getting made, and that would have been Assassin's Creed V technically because they did Roman numerals. Right. And then Victory was the 
proposed title for Syndicate. So we've been having yeah. almost ACVs this whole time, and now we finally <laughs> have it. Assassin's Creed of Unity. <laughs> yeah, I... I gotta say, I, I I really don't mean to. You just just you, you. I don't mean to jump ahead or anything, but I I think I prefer, I much I much prefer victory over fucking syndicate. Hundred percent. It just has a lot more to do with what the game's actually about, and you can tell that with the title of Syndicate, they were trying to hit on the idea. They were really trying to play up the gangs idea. This is Gangs of London, baby. Yeah. Oh, it's a, it's, a, it's a crime syndicate. Yeah. And I almost Ooh. feel like that was an instance of them working backwards from the marketing. Like, I think they said, how do we make this game more fun or lighthearted or joyful or whatever? And they said, well, instead of being all about how grimy and gross the, you know, Victorian England was, we make it about how there were some really cool gangs and gangs are fun. Yeah. And it's just very strange. That's exactly my problem with like the switch up because those screenshots communicate perfect, like the, the perfect like Victorian atmosphere. And then, yeah. it, and then it's like, oh, well, what about my rooks? You know, like not yeah. even a year later. Even like just, the, just the aesthetics, Syndicate is a very colorful game and it doesn't very colorful. look like what you'd expect victorian fucking england to be you know what i mean it, it well and you know they were all like well actually it, it it's sunny every day in england you don't know <laughs> like they, they were like trying to like they were trying to like backpedal and be like actually it it does it rains like once a year in london you <laughs> uneducated you uneducated fucks and it's like I don't know. I, I I think it's pretty dreary sometimes over there. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I'm an uncultured swine, but it definitely seemed like in those in those teaser images for AC Victory or the you know the target gameplay images. Like, I was stoked on the idea that we were going to get a darker Assassin's Creed game, and yes, uh, of course, no, no, because also those leaks happened right around like right before Dead Kings came out. Dead Kings gave us all a taste of what darker Assassin's Creed can be. And boy, was it enticing. And it was like, I remember playing Dead Kings and thinking, man, this is what the whole next game is going to be like. This is so dope. Yeah. I know. I was wrong. They played me. I still think the victory screenshots not being the actual gamer have been my biggest, one of my bigger disappointments with the series. Because when I first saw those screenshots, I was fucking stoked. Because yeah. every, like it just had, like the art style got completely shifted. And I can't help but think that that's because of Unity. They were like, wait a second. People don't seem like Unity because of its dark story and it's it's like or its dark aesthetic, you know. Oh, guillotines and, and beheadings. Oh, that's too dark. Now we gotta go with Gangs of New York and Twins and Henry Green. Or they go, or they go. Black Flag did really well, and that was a fun swashbuckling pirate adventure. Can we do a fun swashbuckling pirate adventure in Victorian London now? Yeah, that's a good point. And that's it's a, a shame because. Victorian London was really high on the list of settings I would have loved to see. So I literally remember exactly where I was when I saw the leak. I was in the backseat of my parents' minivan. We were driving home from dinner and I was looking at the fucking leak on Kotaku, like <gasps> hyperventilating. <laughs> oh, it's finally happening. For sure. I, I mean, and just even like the swinging thing and the like carriage fighting and stuff, it all looked just so... Like the robes too, dude. Like the swinging everything. is my biggest, like, oh, I wish kind of thing. Was yeah. Because swinging, being able to attach a rope point and then swing across a train station is a much more exciting idea than a shitty zip line mechanic. For sure. Because one, one kind of enhances navigation and one lobotomizes it. If I could have been literally Spider Man swinging through London that whole time. Like, you have no idea how sick that would have been. And for there me. are plenty of instances in Rogue that have things that could have been implemented into Syndicate, like the swinging of That's ropes. That's what that I they thought. Had. I mean, Rogue has those ropes. Black Flag has ropes. I thought they were just, they'd found a way to do that. There's so many opportunities that you could have closed the gap between the, the buildings and the streets and still, had, and still had carriages. And I have to look at those screenshots again, but it also kind of seems like these screenshots may have been pre rope launcher. Because the streets in those screenshots look smaller. Or am I... Yeah. I, 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 I could be wrong. Let me look at them real quick. I mean, the one on the carriage, the streets look much more narrow. Let me look at one from, like, above up in the streets. The streets do look wide in the one where he's, like, at a sink point and you see all the smoke. But they don't look as wide as they are actually in the game. Could be totally wrong. Um, still, 
you and I have talked to at length about how many ways they could have closed that gap or made it feel more natural or made it not need the rope launcher as much. But yeah, victory, I'm, I think, one better title. And if they would have kept that same aesthetic, uh, could have been a really interesting game. Here's a game that did not, in my opinion, have a better code name than its actual title. Mm. Assassin's Creed Comet, yeah. later known as Assassin's Creed Rogue. I just don't know what the hell Comet meant in that context. I like I like Comet more, and I I recall knowing why they called it Comet, and I don't remember. <laughs> it wouldn't have made sense. No, I I don't I don't know if it makes sense either, but I I, I prefer Comet over Rogue. I mean, we I think we knew that it was that it was seven years war at that point, right? Yeah, because the reports were claiming that it would take place around 1758. I swear I never knew why it was called Comet. I don't think at any point they were going to call the game Comet. Yeah, I, I'm not seeing a fucking reason why. What is interesting, though, is it says it says here, Game Blog's report claims that Comet will take place in and around 1758, that it will star a sailor named Shay who betrays the captain of his ship and that it's set on the Atlantic Ocean. Game uh, Comet betrays. Game Blog says will continue the nautical theme established in last year's Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. Interesting. It's like half right. Yeah. Like betrays betrays the, the captain of his ship. Uh, not like they really. figured out that he betrayed someone and they filled in some other details. But yeah. I also saw some articles Googling just now that were like, Assassin's Creed Comet might let you play as a Templar. And, you know, right. they were right. I don't know. It's interesting. But I think, and here is where I'm going to throw out my most speculative idea. But I feel like they had to have been talking about following up Black Flag with a Wild West game. I feel like that had to be on the table at some point. Because it just makes sense, given that you would have then played as presumably Connor's son or grandson, I think. And, you know, could have been in like Gold Rush California areas where there were actual cities to run around in. And I've always felt like they could have essentially iterated on the naval mechanic with carriage based desert gameplay where like you could kind of have a faster paced version of that ship combat that has you turning to the sides of your vehicle and, and triggering, you know, gunfire shots. It could have been really cool. That's complete conjecture. I don't think we have any sources saying that at any point they're developing a wild West game. They definitely, though, I feel like hinted at it in that email that's like one of the first emails you open in Assassin's Creed 4 is talking about potential settings. And it's right at the top is this really cool, like cowboy assassin artwork. And probably the reason they put that in is because they knew they weren't making that game. But I would love to live in the what if alternate reality where we got that instead of Rogue and then Unity got delayed and then everything else that we want to see happen also happened. Yeah. I think it's safe to say that the idea was floated around. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah, I mean, there's nothing that confirms that they were ever going to work on it. But there is, I think, plenty that you could translate over from especially Black Flag mechanics to a Wild West game, like having four revolvers on you at a time. Yeah. And I think with carriage stuff, it could be interesting if they maybe could lean into, instead of pirates, lean more into, like, Wild West gangs. And you have, like, perhaps... How I think carriage combat would work most most appropriately is that you have some some buddies with you on a carriage, and they're kind of helping you steer or whatever, like while you're attacking the next carriage. Like carriages, the only thing is like even a stagecoach isn't that big, so I don't I don't know like how well you could translate like big old ship combat to carriages. I do think that that's the best way they could they could translate it over. Yeah, I would have preferred that to something like what Syndicate did with carriages. For right, instance. for sure, for sure. And and I could see where it's just cars. I, I could see too, like they bring back like like more ramming stuff, like from Revelations. Yeah, uh, and also, yeah. Uh, you know, we talked about this. You could have trains. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. You could do I, train I, robberies. Yeah, like instead of having legendary ships, you have like legendary trains that you have to rob. And I think that the the story hook that would have been really interesting for that game is I think that that would be a story where maybe the Templars would actually win because I feel like the Wild West is really, in a lot of ways, a story about the establishment of law and who's going to be out there trying to establish law and order. It's going to be the Templars. You know what I mean? 
and ultimately they'll be victorious. And that could have factored in. I'm not an expert on the history at all. I've just, I know that like, that's the prevailing theme in Westerns is the relationship between, between criminality, vigilantism and organized law. And it's super interesting to me, the idea of getting to juxtapose the assassin Templar conflict onto that. I feel like that it's too late. I don't think that the modern way these games get made and their priorities would lend itself to a wild west setting. Uh, you know, I would hate to see what the origins odyssey gameplay version of wild west looks like. Right. Cause that would be, there'd just be no parkour anywhere. Yeah. Um, I mean, rogue rogue makes me feel like they could have done like a American wild west architecture and, and done it fine. You know, done it well. Yeah. Because rogue does it light years better than three does. Okay, so two things, actually. My hang-up with the Wild West game, even, like, I would love it. I think it would put a nice cap on the, like, you know, Kenway trilogy, because you see three different Kenways and very distinct different time periods. But from what I have, like, this little, you know, Reddit searches here and there, it seems like while, like, the pirate history stuff is maybe dramatized, but not to an unrealistic or, or false way in, in black flag like but with the wild west I, I feel like i've read places that it's kind of one of the more dramatized and exaggerated times in history yeah i don't know how well because ac does history very well i don't know how how well they could translate that if it really isn't the whole big like cowboys and, and draws out in the middle of the road I think when you think about how dramatized it's been, I'm sure there's a happy medium, just like with pirates. I mean, yes. obviously in Black Flag, pirates did exist and they did plunder shit. Yes. You know? And just like in the Wild West, there were criminals and they did steal shit. And the, it was called the Wild West for a reason. It's probably not quite like showdowns <laughs> at high noon. Yeah. No, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not suggesting that like nothing ever Wild Westy happened. It just, like, it does seem to me that, like, it's not as exciting as people think. I think it would be really interesting, too, just to see, like, a Connor Connor's grandson perspective, like, a, the, an American Indian perspective, not only in the American Revolution, but also in the Wild West, where things were equally as shitty for Native Americans, you know? So, yeah, could be, could be really Definitely interesting. Definitely could have been really, really fucking cool, dude. I agree. And my other favorite alternate history alternate possibility um it is pretty heavily rumored for instance that uh there was at one point in development maybe also with ubisoft sophia a game that would have been set to come out in 2016 that would have been built on the same framework as uh unity and syndicate were and that's a really interesting possibility to explore because if you're like me and, and I think most fans, there's a recognition, even if those games were not perfect by any means and both were very, very flawed in their own ways, that that was still a better next gen approximation of what an Assassin's Creed experience could be than a lot of what they've done since with Origins Odyssey and, and now Valhalla. And like, that's not an assessment of quality, mind you, like that's just an assessment of like. Well, the games have historically been about city urban settings with lots of parkour. They're not right now, but in those two games, at least we know they were. And another game of that in that vein could have been really great because it could have been an opportunity to kind of iron out the kinks of that gameplay formula in the same way that Revelations ironed out the kinks in the same way that Rogue ironed out the kinks that game could have. And my two favorite ideas for settings, the two settings I most want to see would have been the settings that would have made the most sense to follow up on syndicate with number one being the Russian revolution, 1917, that would have made perfect sense. Cause then you'd have a revolution trilogy. You had the French revolution, the industrial revolution and the Russian revolution. Mwah, 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 mwah. Beautiful, 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 super neat. <laughs> right. And that would have made me, I would have been, I would have been very, I would have had, I've been very excited uh, I'd have been, I've been downright turgid about that. And the second one, uh, the second one, I want to see like 1920s, uh, right. city in America, Chicago, maybe New York city. Maybe I want to have like that game, which also would have been a very logical follow-up from syndicate. Yeah. I, I do think, I do think in terms of just like, like you said, the revolution trilogy, that's where Russian revolution may, may have like won the race or, or like, yeah, like, like, a, like a roaring twenties game. But the Roaring Twenties being about, like, crime syndicates and, and whatnot and organized crime, yeah. similarly to syndicates. So they both would have worked. I 
probably would have been the easier asset flip between the two. Probably easier to turn Syndicate London into 20s New York than it would be to turn Syndicate London into Moscow. Yeah, and you also, like, there's plenty of things where you could just turn carriages into, into cars. Yeah. You can just have that, and that would be interesting, to say the least. And you yeah. would have... You would have like more automatic weapons and both. It's probably time we've got a little bit more to say about the the Origins Odyssey, the, the mythological trilogy, if you will. Uh, some alternate possibilities for that. Because like Origins, for instance, is fascinating in the number of ways it could have been different. First of all, would have been called Empire. Absolutely a better title. Better title, 100%. <laughs> no no doubt no disagreement origins is a shitty title it's as generic as they come and it says nothing about the game <laughs> actually well do you know what the code name was for odyssey <laughs> was it chojin <laughs> i'll tell you in a moment and then you'll change your mind okay um no <laughs> it didn't make any sense um for origins though the the big thing is originally it was gonna be written by Darby, so it was gonna be the right. Darby and Ashraf reunion right. after Black Flag, and Darby came up with a lot of concepts that made it into the final game. I'm pretty sure he created the characters of Bayek and Aya, but he never wanted to do the Avenging a Dead Son story. He he had no nothing to do with Kemu. I I I I, I think Darby named them. I don't think he came up with them. I mean, maybe Ashraf said, here are the archetypes I want to work yeah. with. I have a Medjai. Right. The Medjai has a wife. And then and then Darby looks at a history book and goes, oh, we'll call them Bayek and Aya. <laughs> you know? <laughs> right. Like, I, I do think it tracks that Ashraf would have already have come, uh, come up with at least the main character. Anyway, sorry. Um, but he left because he wanted to work on what we now know was a canceled Ubisoft space project. Uh, he, Which would have been so cool. But I feel like I've heard him say or imply somewhere, or I've heard this from other people, question mark. I can't, I don't remember, but I've just heard that like Darby didn't really enjoy essentially that, that with origins that they had this framework for what the gameplay was going to be. And Darby was struggling to see how it could really work for an Assassin's Creed narrative. And he just on Twitter expressed some frustration with the whole decision that origins made of saying, well, here were the hidden ones in the order of ancients seemingly contradicting the lore that had already been established that, you know, the assassins brotherhood could have existed long before then it created all of these really weird, like narrative hiccups that they've had to now retcon or explain away and say, Oh, well there's an assassin symbol on those statues because they were like assassins, but they weren't really assassins. They were hidden ones. Yeah. It's a, it's all a little crazy and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Yeah, it the the biggest thing is 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 the is the Monteregioni tomb. Some of those assassins predate Origins, and they are referenced as assassins. Yeah, in plenty of in plenty of other ways, they reference them as assassins and Templars. Like the whole thing was that the assassins and Templars, in some form or fashion, existed, bef like since the dawn of time. And I just don't see that. Like, oh, ancient Egypt is is when they officially were called the assassins and Templars. Like, no. It could have predated that. The only probably. the first time we got a hint of that was that there was a database letter in Syndicate yeah. mm -hmm. where they're saying like, oh, and before they were Assassins and Templars, they were called something else. I wonder what those groups were called. It doesn't help that the Hidden Ones is a terrible name for a, for a group. It's so on the nose, right? Ah, the hidden they're ones. the ones who are hidden. Like the Order of the Ancients actually doesn't sound that bad. It sounds bad, cool, but, the... but I don't understand why it's called the Order of the Ancients. Like who are the Ancients? The order, but they're all. Are they ancients? Is everyone in it an ancient? <laughs> Hi, it's and me. It's, it's all I'm an Arno. Ancient. It's all Arno. <laughs> <laughs> Next generation ancients, all ancients. Um. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's. I yeah. I guess I'm not like all. I'm all. I'm really upset about is that like they basically had to go through the the the, the hoops of like oh well all these assassins that predate origins they're actually hidden ones yeah. instead. Like it's fuck and, off. and there's no you don't earn anything by doing that. Like it doesn't make the story better to just to 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 go with that. I think it's very clear that at one point it was a game that was called Assassin's Creed Empire. It was set in ancient Egypt. There would have been assassins in it, and there would have been Templars in it. <laughs> and then someone in marketing said, you know, look, ancient Egypt, we're not sure it's actually gonna sell. But what if this was an origin story? And then they just tacked on a bunch of origin story bullshit at the very end. Or yeah. 
Or Don't even get me started about the ring finger. Possibly shit. it had nothing to do with. Maybe they just wanted to make a game that was going to be like not have any assassins or Templars in it. And it was going to do its own thing. And then they said, well, you have to turn it into an origin story for it to make sense. There's obviously it's not like anyone who knew at all what they were doing had anything to do with that decision. If they knew as they should have known that the game immediately after it was going to be set 400 years before. And I don't know who makes these calls, but there's no way whoever did. did. They were they were not they were they were bad calls. They were not good calls that you made. It would have been interesting if it was just Assassin's Creed Empire, Assassin's Templars, Ancient Egypt done. And then they could have done whatever the fuck they wanted to after that. But it started the precedent of like, ooh, it's proto assassins and proto Templars, which, which shouldn't mean that much. If if the hidden if the hidden ones don't represent anything different from the assassins and they didn't evolve into the assassins. Then why is then then why make the distinction if they're all assassins? That's a great point. Why did they make the distinction? Let us know in the comments if you know why they made the distinction. But you don't, because no one really does. Hey, so Tim, do you remember a little while back I told you that there was a code name for Assassin's Creed Odyssey and that when you heard it you would like the final name better? Yeah, I I, I feel like there's there might be a part of me that knows it already, but yeah, go for yeah. it. Yeah. It was gonna be, I think, Dynasty. Yeah, okay. Which really fucking hurt me deeply because imagine hearing the next AC game is titled Dynasty and thinking, where are they going in Asia? Is it going to be China? Is it going to be Japan? And then imagine at the end of that, we get that game. Fuck. (laughs) Jesus Christ. What a disappointment. Um, And that's a super bummer. And we have to hit on something that's a very important what if possibility um, that I should have mentioned earlier, right? One thing we know changed from Syndicate uh, was that Evie's screen time basically got cut in half. And we also know that with Assassin's Creed Odyssey, that originally the developers wanted a single female protagonist, uh, but Ubisoft Sergei Hascote would not let that happen. And with Origins, Aya was supposed to become the main protagonist halfway through, right? That's a great point I fucking forgot about. You're completely right. Yeah, Bayek was going to die halfway through the game, and Aya was going to be the protagonist. Which would have been great, That would have right? been, that been awesome. so cool. You have no idea. Like, just amazing. It would have been, It would have been like Hatham and Connor all over I again. I love protagonist switcheroos. I love when it happens. So, th- so you, so you must love Force Awakens then. The Force Awakens? <laughs> no, well, I just the whole marketing campaign marketed a uh, Finn as like the as like the Jedi character, oh. and then I still think it's brilliant. The posters, the trailers, everything is like Finn, 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 and then it turns out turns out to be Ray. And so, Kylo, you are shocked just as Kylo and Finn are that Ray is actually the chosen one. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, and then they <laughs> sidelined Finn for the next two movies because Disney is racist. <laughs> They're le- they're more racist than they are sexist, which is good. Yeah, <laughs> it's not just good. like I'm kidding. I'm America. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, so like that's a big thing for Origins. Odyssey should have just been Cassandra, and honestly, I would have just loved. I mean, obviously, Cassandra I think is the better protagonist between the two as far as the performance goes. Alexios sucks straight up. I'm just gonna say mm. it right now. <laughs> oh my God, I'm Alexios. <laughs> This isn't forced at all. Dude, the actor for Alexios is fucking beautiful. Oh, yeah. That, that Michael Antonakos or whatever. Yeah, Michael Alexios. He's a, <laughs> a great looking dude. Uh, Cassandra is beautiful in real life, too. Melisandre Mahout. Yeah, she she, she got Owen railed Wilson. by Will Ferrell in, a, in Netflix. <laughs> uh, did you hear me? Did you hear what I just said? No. <laughs> I said she got fucked by Owen Wilson, which is not the is not the actor. <laughs> I meant Will Ferrell. I meant what you were saying. <laughs> Owen the, Owen Wilson is more Vince Vaughn's counterpart than Will. Yeah, Ferrell. Owen I'm Wilson sure and Will from. Ferrell are not really in the same sphere. <laughs> Well, wait, wait, no. Oh, yeah, Will Ferrell and Owen Wilson were not in Wedding Crashes. Look, she got railed by Will Ferrell in a Netflix movie. That is a fact. We all know about it. We've moved past it. <laughs> <laughs> I I missaid her name earlier. It's Melisanthi Mahout, I believe. I'm sure I'm butchering the pronunciation, but I said the wrong first name. Anyway, sorry? If it had just been Cassandra, then... We wouldn't be looking at these weird gender choice 
uh, justifications either. We would. Yeah, you almost wonder like how late in the game did Valhalla's whole idea come up with, which we still don't really know the true nature of. Uh, we still have not yet had to eat our words and deeds um, on that. <laughs> but when we do, yeah, it's like, is there any way that that would have happened had Odyssey not been forced into a uh, a double gender situation? Anyway, lots of what ifs. And then one uh, finally example of where the code name was much, much better. Yeah, here we Assassin's go. Assassin's Creed Kingdoms. It just makes perfect sense. Uh, I thought you were going to mention the ancient Rome game. Well, I, there is some speculation that they would have done a Rome game last year, but I'm not sure. I think that definitely if it existed, which I wouldn't be surprised if it did, it would have been way too similar to Origins and Odyssey. It would have been really a, a, for sure, a, for sure. a burnout. And then can you I imagine agree. getting Valhalla the year after that and just being like expecting something dramatically different and getting the same shit? Well, I think I think originally what we were assuming was that like Valhalla wasn't even in, in on the table. Like the Rome game was coming, and then we would close off the, tri- the, the like technically the ancient trilogy that way. Now Valhalla has now turned it more into the myth like the mythology trilogy because it's not ancient. But it seemed like for a while that we were thinking that ancient Rome was going to come, and then that would cap off like the ancient trilogy, and then we would get whatever else. Black Flag comes out in 2013. So 2013 slash 14 is when Origins starts development. 2015 is when Odyssey starts development. So 2016 could have been where uh, where a Rome game started development. And then they get maybe a year into that process. And then Origins comes out and those developers free up. And then after that year, they're like, you know what? This Rome game isn't really going to shake out because it's just too similar to these other two. So let's give the iterative title to the origins guys and then come up with something that I feel like what we're going to end up seeing is that Valhalla is more of like a 0.5 iteration. Like Odyssey is pretty much origins. It's origins 1.1, right? So this would be origins like (laughs) 1.5 or 1.7 or whatever. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's not as iterative, but it's still pretty iterative. That makes sense to me. It's a it's a halfway point between what Origins looks like and what a fully next generation Assassin's Creed will look like. It's the rogue. Yeah, we definitely know that like the next Assassin's Creed game is going to is going to be using a lot more of the next gen technology that's out now. It won't be on like PS4 or Xbox One, yeah. I think personally. Um so that will be the not iterative like it, it's it's going to be something completely different. It might still utilize the RPG stuff. I don't know. I probably if I if I were a betting man, I'd say yes. Yeah. We're not going to have a fourth title in this kind of like or, uh, running off of the origins fo- game philosophy. Yeah, I don't think so either. And I think if I think earlier on it was easier to think. Um, you know, uh, our our buddy Noah has talked about this a lot, thinking that the you can kind of sort these games more into duologies than trilogies, which is. Fair, because after Revelations, if Rogue is counted as a spinoff, you've only had duologies, three and four, Unity and Syndicate, Origins and Odyssey. But then it makes sense for the idea to be that Valhalla has a second game that would be somewhere like, as I think Noah suggested, the Black Plague right. in England or some, or France. Um, and Valhalla is certainly a part of the But trilogy. that's the thing, is that Valhalla is too similar to Origins and Odyssey, probably more Way than we would have thought beforehand uh, when those kinds of predictions yeah. got made, it's not syndicate to origins different. That's the that, exactly. that's the thing. Like origins doesn't fit in the Unity Syndicate trilogy, obviously. And you know you have Origins Odyssey. Valhalla definitely fits with Odyssey. Definitely, exactly. You know, yeah. So, so the idea that we'll get another game like this next year that would be cross gen, and that would, I don't think that's going to happen personally. But there are a lot of what ifs. We were really only able to scratch the surface of them here. Here's a fun question, Lust, and I, I don't know if I don't know if you think this would be appropriate I'd like to end on, but I it's kind of a what if. Like we've we've talked about it. Uh, do you think that it's possible that the next game is another soft reboot type deal like Unity? Yeah, no, I think so. I think definitely. I think it also opens up considering the post launch shit we got for Valhalla. I don't think we're getting an Assassin's Creed game in 2021. I think a 2022 release is is more likely, especially if this is going to be the big next gen title. Fully agree. I think Valhalla post launch content will will keep everyone 
satisfied for a little while. Uh, those who are satisfied by Bahala, obviously. <laughs> and then I think I'm going to say right now, you and I have talked about this. I think if it is going to be like a soft reboot that's cl- more classically aligned, maybe like like maybe a much bigger compromise. I think they're going to fucking, and especially if they go Eastern, I think they're just, they're just going to call it Assassin's Creed and we're going to, we're going to see what the fuck happens with that. But I don't think the brand has been poisoned to the extent that it's necessary to blow up the subtitle thing. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I think that time will come, but they're saving that for when things get really fucked. Although this would be a more likely time for them to do it than any other time. That said, I do think we'll set, we'll get a subtitle because they're very big on having the subtitles convey what the actual setting is. Like Odyssey immediately says Greek because the Odyssey is fucking famous Greek literature. Sure. Valhalla, they sure. chose over kingdoms as I was maybe going to say earlier, because they thought as a marketing department that, that kingdoms doesn't tell you it's Vikings, but Valhalla does. And I'm sure that that was a compromise because I think Valhalla still ties into some of the themes of the game. Whereas they could have been like Assassin's Creed Ragnarok and it would have made no sense. <laughs> I guarantee you marketing department Assassin's wanted to Creed do that. Pillage. They wanted to do that. I swear yeah, no, to God. Yeah, totally. Valhalla definitely conveys Vikings, but also just like the the yearning for Valhalla and what yeah. within the game. So I can uh, just picture Darby in a room with some poor marketing director. He's like, "You have to meet me halfway here, please. We can't call it Ragnarok. <laughs> it won't make any goddamn sense." I I I definitely see where you're coming from. Obviously, I think just calling it Assassin's Creed would be like that'd be big, like, re, like actual reboot time. Yeah. Um. And 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 for cat for more casual people, Assassin's Creed is not dying. People people are really enjoying this this version, yeah. this phase of Assassin's Creed. The brand is in a much better place than it was back then, and that's also why I think that 2022 is when we're going to get the next gen game. Because if this was the Ubisoft of 2014, if it was Unity all over again, they'd be saying we have to get one out this year because we have to be yearly releases. But I think now they're going to say no. Let's take our time. Let's kill all of the bugs and let's put it out when it really right. deserves it because it'll be one of the yeah. first i think fully next gen games that's really been in development for a long time i can't think of anything else other than what bethesda's cooking up that we know is going to come out in the next couple of years that will have nearly a decade of development under its belt that's why i think they they could maybe just call it assassin's creed for that it's reason possible. It's, it's, i think it's it's going to represent a big change yeah let us know in the comments First off, what you think about some of these alternate possibilities we've discussed, which ones you would have loved to see, like what your favorite potential idea was. Is it the Rome game, a Russian Revolution game, a Wild West game? All of these very easily could have existed in an alternate universe. Would you rather be in an alternate universe where a different presidential candidate won the election? And also leave a like, subscribe to us. If you've made it this far, you've probably already done that, but we would appreciate you doing it anyway. Hey, um, you know, unsubscribe and then resubscribe just so that we get the notification. That'd be fine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Make sure you fucking sound off in the comments. Yeah. Sound Let off. us know in the comments. I think they should. I think they should talk to us in the comments or tweet at us. If you're listening, you're or not on YouTube. <laughs> what I, YouTube. You, YouTube. If you're, if you're not on YouTube, you should just tweet at us, bro. <laughs> tweet at us at Hookblade. Okay. Listen, I've been the hook. And I've. Uh, and I, I and I've been the blade, <laughs> and I've been the what, <laughs> and I've been the. Earth. Oh, that's that's yeah, that's cute. You're really clever, Tim. That's cute. Thanks. We will see you next week. Hey, by the way, guys, here's what we're kind of doing. You might want to know. You might be curious what we're gonna do about Valhalla. It's coming out on Tuesday, the tenth. The tenth, Tuesday, the tenth. We're recording on Wednesday so that we can upload on Thursday. So, Tim, you'll have a couple days in the game. <laughs> but yeah, so I'll have, I'll definitely be able to get my first impressions on everything come the 11th of November. So. Yeah, we're going to do a first impressions episode that Thursday at our normal time, and it'll be spoiler free. We'll just be talking about the things that we think you can listen while you play. Then a week later, hopefully we'll have gotten through the main story. We can get into a little bit more of a actual review context. And I'd imagine that in the future, we'll be bringing some people on to talk about the game and talk about certain things surrounding the game and, and all that good stuff. And really just dive into 
uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla here on the Hookblade podcast. It is what we've been waiting for this whole time when we started making this show. I'm a little surprised we've made it this far, <laughs> to be honest. Thanks for listening. I've been the Hook. I've been the Blade. Good night. Good night. and the blade, so you can use one or the other.